Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome in. It's great having you. So in today's video, I wanted to talk about tretinoin and how beginners can start using it without irritation so that they can have success in the long run. So tretinoin, aka Retin-A, is one of the most important anti-aging ingredients that we have and it has been shown with like 40 years of research to be the gold standard because it actually helps to increase collagen production in the skin. It helps to thicken the deeper layers of your skin so that you get that plump, bouncy skin back. And it helps to thin out the outer dead layer of skin that can make your skin look dry and crepey. And in doing those things, it helps to reduce fine lines and wrinkles. It helps to firm up your skin. It can reduce your acne and it can reduce discolorations, give you a more even skin tone and just help your skin to look in general younger. So of course people love tretinoin, dermatologists tell you how great it is and I always tell you how great it is because I've been using it for 10 years and I have seen the amazing changes in my skin because of it. My skin looks better now at 60 than it did when I turned 50 and that's really a tribute to the power of tretinoin and I love it. Uh, but when I first started using it, it was a struggle for me. 10 years ago, you were just told to put it on every night, live through the horrible, painful irritation phase, hopefully get used to it and come out the other side with younger looking skin. Well, that didn't work for me. My face hurt so bad, was so red, was so peely, I stopped using it. So I decided to do a little research into tretinoin and I discovered that there are actually ways that you can use it differently so that you can acclimate to it and so that you can use it for the long haul because you really wanna use it for a long, long time because it takes a long time to see the results initially. It can take anywhere from six months to two years to see results and I know a lot of people are like, whoa, that's a long time. Yeah, it is. You are undoing all the sun damage and all the aging that you've accrued on your skin over the last, what, 40, 50 years. So yeah, it's not going to take a minute to make a change at the cellular level, which is what tretinoin does. So it does take a while to work. You have to get into the mindset of, I'm just going to be patient because it is so worth it. I can tell you just from my own personal experience, how worth it using tretinoin is. So today I'm going to share five methods for applying your Retin-A so that you can acclimate to it over time. And then stay tuned to the end for two extra tips that I have that could help you along if even though you're doing all these methods right, you're still having a little irritation. There are sometimes some other things that can add to that. So stick around to the end and I'll share those with you too. So before we get started, go ahead and give the video a like and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. So the first one is to wait for your face to dry completely before you apply your tretinoin. That's because damp skin is more absorbent than dry skin. You let your skin dry after washing it so that you get less full absorption out of it, which gives you less irritation. So since you apply tretinoin at night, you would wash your face at night, remove all your makeup, pat dry, then you're going to wait 15 to 20 minutes before you apply your tretinoin. If you think that you have super sensitive skin, you can apply a little bit of petroleum jelly or super occlusive moisturizer to just a few little spot areas of your face, like the corners of your mouth, around your nostrils and maybe a little bit under your eyes. That will keep the tretinoin from absorbing in those areas because those areas have either thinner skin or they're extra absorbent. You wanna slow down the absorption rate to start and then you would put on your tretinoin. You just put on a little pea sized amount, I would dot it around my face and then I would rub it in. So when I first started, I didn't put it around my mouth at all. I didn't put it near the corners of my lips, underneath, between my mouth and nose. I also avoided the corners of my nose, my nostrils. I also didn't put it underneath my eyes or on my eyelids. Pretty much put it on my forehead, my crow's feet, on my cheeks, then down here to my chin, across the bottom of my chin, and then I always put a little bit down here on the jowlies because of course that is skin that we really wanna firm up, so make sure that you bring a little bit of it down here. Then I would just go ahead and put on the rest of my nighttime skincare routine, which was basically peptides and moisturizers. Tip number two is to resist the urge to start using your tretinoin every single night and only apply it once a week to start. And do that for the entire first month. So over the course of a month, you're only gonna use it four times. So for the first month, only once a week. 
Then the second month, if your skin is okay, you don't have any signs of peeling or irritation, then you go up to two nights a week. So then you set your calendar, you're gonna do Wednesday and Sunday or you know whatever your schedule allows. Then after a month of that, if your skin is still looking and feeling good, then you go up to three nights a week. So doing it that way, I was able to increase my usage up to seven nights a week in nine months. So you notice that wasn't seven months, so I didn't just immediately bump up every month. There were some months that I had to drop back and wait a little bit. So if I went from three nights a week to four nights a week, and all of a sudden my skin was like, whoa, slow down girl, this hurts it's burning, it's stinging, it's red, there's more peeling. I'd be like, oh, okay, I hear you skin. And then I would go back to whatever I was doing previously, say three nights a week. And then I would wait until I wanted to try again. That's up to you, you have to listen to your skin. Then try again, and if all goes well, then you are up to seven nights a week within the course of a year. So those first two tips were how I was able to acclimate. That's the process I used and it worked great for me. And so I hope if you give that a try that it will work for you as well. But of course you might've tried that already or it may just sound like something that's not gonna work for you. In which case I've got some other methods here that hopefully will help. And the next one, tip number three, is something that I wish had been around back then when I was just starting because I think it really could have helped me a lot. And that is to get your tretinoin from a service like Agency. So I'm an ambassador for Agency. So this little portion of the video is gonna be sponsored by Agency, but you guys know that I don't take sponsorships from anyone unless it's a product that I absolutely, absolutely love and have used for a long time. So I've been using Agency for a year and a half already. Before that, I was using their sister company, Curology, which also provided my tretinoin, but that was a little more geared towards acne. But when they launched this sister company, Agency, specifically for the needs of aging skin, I was like, yeah, I wanna try that. I wanna see if I could take my skin to the next level. So I switched over and sure enough, it was even better using Agency than it had been using Curology, and so I've stuck with it over time. The great thing about the Agency service and the reason that it can really help you to acclimate to using tretinoin without quitting is because they match you up one-on-one -on -one with a dermatology provider, and the dermatology provider is there to guide you through the entire process. So they start off by looking at pictures of your skin and you write down all your skincare concerns and you tell them what you've tried in the past, what's in your skincare routine now, you know, what you're concerned about, if it's wrinkles or melasma or rosacea or sagging skin, and they can pinpoint and address those issues and add in the exact ingredients that you need for your skin. So it's not generic tretinoin that is the same across the board for everybody that only comes in three strengths. Their tretinoin comes in so many strengths that they can start you off on a really, really low strength so that you can use it more than once a week. And then they can bump you up over time, checking in with you before they send you every single bottle to make sure that your skin is okay, that you're not having any irritation. They can include other ingredients in the bottle that can help to fight irritation, that can help to fight redness in your skin. I have my tretinoin, but then my bottle also contains azelaic acid, niacinamide, and tranexamic acid. And two of those are anti-redness ingredients, so they've helped to make my skin even clearer, help to reduce the look of irritation in my skin. And the best part about it is really the one-on-one -on -one with the dermatology provider because they give you so much information on how to use it correctly, what you can use with it, how you can develop a skincare routine if you don't have a skincare routine going already. And then they check in with you before they send out the next shipment to make sure you're doing okay to either ratchet it back or ratchet it up depending on your skin. So if you're interested in starting with Agency, there's a link in the info box below the video. You just click that link, you'll upload your pictures, you and your provider will work back and forth, come up with your formula, it'll get shipped right to your door, and you will be on your way to using tretinoin successfully, maybe for the first time ever, because of the partnership that you're gonna have with your agency provider. So method number four is called the sandwich method, and it's called the sandwich method because basically you take your tretinoin and you sandwich it between two moisturizers. So it's like a tretinoin sandwich and the bread is the moisturizers. It's kind of achieving the same thing as we did in tip one, where you waited for your skin to dry so it would absorb less. If you just put on a moisturizer beforehand, it will definitely absorb a little bit less. 
But I know a lot of people can't stand that dry, tight feeling after they've washed their face. They just can't wait 20 minutes, 15 minutes for their face to become completely dry. Depending on how sensitive your skin is, you can either use a very lightweight moisturizer up to a heavyweight moisturizer. I wouldn't use anything that has a lot of extra active ingredients in it, something that's very mild, that's gonna be really good for your skin barrier. A lightweight moisturizer that I love for this is the CeraVe PM Lotion. That's a great one, really basic moisturizer. So you could put that on first, then you maybe wait two or three minutes to put on your tretinoin. Then you put on your tretinoin, like I showed you before, you should still be avoiding those same places, even using the sandwich method. And then when you're finished putting on your tretinoin, then you take another moisturizer and you put it on top. It can be the same moisturizer, say the CeraVe PM again, or it could be a heavier weight moisturizer. My current favorite is e.l.f. Holy Hydration. I love this one. It's got so many really great ingredients in it, but it's so mild and soothing and gentle. If you have super sensitive, super dry skin, you might wanna use the heavier weight moisturizer for both pieces of bread in your sandwich. Or if you have oilier skin and you're not so sensitive, then you might want to use a lighter weight moisturizer like the CeraVe PM as both the pieces of bread in your sandwich. Now, even doing the moisturizer sandwich method, if it's your first time using a retinoid, I still wouldn't start in every single night. Doing the sandwich method, I would say you could probably start in with two to three nights a week maybe for the first couple of weeks. Give it a couple weeks, see how it goes. If your skin's fine, then you might wanna bump up from two to three or three to four nights for another couple of weeks, see how it goes. That's a method that could work really well because of course tretinoin does cause dryness in the skin and so adding extra moisturizer can definitely help to fight that, it helps to repair your skin barrier. All right, tip number five is to try the wash off method. Now, this is a new one to me. A viewer just told me about this, but she said that she read about it online somewhere and it worked perfectly for her. So I'm just gonna tell you about it just in case you think this sounds like something that you might wanna try. And I just thought this was such an interesting way to go about it. This method is very similar to doing like short exposure therapy. So with this method, you put your tretinoin on, you let it sit on for a certain amount of time, and then you wash it off. And then you put on the rest of your skincare. You leave the tretinoin on your skin for longer and longer amounts of time before you wash it off so that you're giving your skin longer bits of exposure to it, but you're not leaving it on overnight until you're much further down the road. All right, so here's the schedule that she said she used and had success with it. For the first three nights, she applies her tretinoin, leaves it on for 15 minutes, and then washes it off. And then I assume she goes in with other skincare, like moisturizers and stuff. Then for the next three nights, she leaves it on for 30 minutes before washing it off. Then the next three nights, she leaves it on for an hour before washing it off. Then the next three nights, leaves it on for two hours before washing it off, and then leaves it on overnight after that. So that is 12 nights. All of a sudden, you're up to leaving it on overnight every night. That seems fast to me, but I don't know. She said it worked for her, so maybe she doesn't have super sensitive skin. I would say that like with everything else, you could try this method, but listen to your skin while you're doing it. But if at some point your skin starts showing signs of irritation, I would definitely go back to whatever you were doing, hold there until you feel like you can bump up again and then give it a try. All right, so those are all the five methods for acclimating to tretinoin. I hope if you give one of them a try that they work for you. And of course, as I said with everyone, always listen to your skin and adjust as needed. So now the two tips that I mentioned at the beginning, the first one is to remove any other acids from your skincare routine that you may be using when you're just starting with tretinoin. Because even though you may be acclimated to those acids already, adding in another acid may just be like too much, put your skin over the edge. So you really wanna only be working with one acid at a time. The other acids are salicylic acid, alpha hydroxy acids, which are mainly glycolic acid, mandelic acid, or lactic acid, and vitamin C is the other acid. The other acid you're probably using is hyaluronic acid. That is not one that you need to discontinue use, even though it's called an acid. It's not an acid in the sense that it's gonna cause any irritation. It is actually a very soothing ingredient. It's a humectant, so it can be considered a moisturizer, so you don't need to strip that out of your routine at all. But if you're using an over-the-counter retinoid, don't use two retinoids on the same night. Just use the tretinoin and drop out the over-the-counter retinoid on the night that you're using the tretinoin. And 
Tip number two is to switch to a mineral sunscreen if you're noticing some burning or stinging of your skin when you put on your sunscreen in the morning. If you're using a retinoid at night, it can make your skin a little extra sun sensitive and you wanna protect the tretinoin and your skin from sun exposure. So definitely use a sunscreen every day while you're using any kind of anti-aging active ingredient. But chemical sunscreens can irritate your skin as well. So if you're putting on your tretinoin, no problem, and you're putting on all your other products, no problem, but then you hit your skin with your sunscreen and all of a sudden it stings, that means that you're having some irritation from the chemical sunscreen ingredients. And so in that case, I would say to switch to a mineral sunscreen. The mineral sunscreens are much less irritating and they shouldn't cause any stinging and burning, especially around the eyes. And that's it for today's video. That is all of the advice I have for how to begin using tretinoin so that you can continue with it over the long haul so that you can see the results over time and have success with it. I hope you found it helpful and informative. If you did, give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.